Hello and welcome to my channel, I Went to Lose Gaming. So, for those of you that don't know, Zhong Li is one of my favorite characters in the entire game and, you know, so many people's favorite characters. I've been using him since his release all the way back in patch 1 point whatever it is now. So I've had a lot of experience and, fun fact, I was one of the first people that I'm aware of, at least on YouTube, that really promoted an HP focus build on this guy. Like so many people were trying to get him to do a ton of damage, but I was like, you know what, my characters are dying in one hit. I want this guy to protect them. And hey, I mean, what do you know? I think um, that <laughs> that video's aged quite well, if I do say so myself. So anyway, this guy doesn't have any scripts or anything like that, but I do have a ton of information to share with you guys. Zhong Li is a an incredibly flexible character and in this video alone i'll be going over three builds for him support build sub dps build and main dps build and just like that we're gonna get started with this comprehensive guide to one of the best husbandos in genshin impact zhong li So let's start off as we always do by looking at the character's talents. We're going to start off with his normal attacks which have 6 parts to it and the 5th part has 4 hits in it. He also has a charge attack that no one ever really uses but let's go take a quick look at it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the kick and it's pretty common knowledge that you can um, dash cancel the kick. So next let's talk about his elemental skill. Tapping has a 4 second cooldown and it makes this... Um, pillar and holding it makes the pillar as well. I have constellation one so that's why there are two pillars and it also shields you. It has a cooldown 12 seconds when held and a 20 second shield duration and also because the only shield is geo it has 50% additional absorption on top of the normal formula that has you know whatever 25.6% of his max HP plus a flat 3153 HP to his shield. It does a lot of damage to existing geo structures, but really that's not really too important. Um, there's only really there's only really one fight that I'm aware of that it really matters a lot, and that's the geo hypostasis. Next thing is his elemental burst, Planet Befall. This has a very large skill damage multiplier, level nine. I think it's 864 percent off the top of my head, but either way, very large skill multiplier. But it is a bit deceiving. Yes, it is very large, but at the same time, it only doesn't have any crazy damage amplification things like you know Hu Tao does with her E and whatever else, right? So it has four second petrification duration at level 10 and it has 3.1 seconds at level 1 something like that but every time you level it up up until level 10 it gains 0.1 second petrification duration so you know um, a lot of people do crown it for that extra 0.1 seconds I personally don't necessarily recommend it. it's only 0.1 seconds and now let's take a look at his passives this thing is whatever right who cares you take a few more hits on the shield and it absorbs a little bit more damage. And this one here is important at least for when it comes to it's only doing damage and that his damage does scale a bit with his HP stat. Just really quick to get this out of the way, his damage does not scale better with HP. In fact, it actually still scales better with attack, at least I'm pretty sure for almost every scenario. However, the difference between attack percent and HP percent is pretty small and we will get into this in a bit more detail later. Last thing is that he refunds 15% of ore used to when you craft <laughs> polearm type weapons. This is pretty much useless as, you know, a free to play can farm the refunded stuff in literally five minutes, if not let, probably like two minutes you can farm the amount of ore that was uh, refunded. <laughs> so yeah, one good way to balance him out is to give him a useless exploration passive. But of course, exploration wise, he is very, very good. Uh, the shield's amazing, right, to keep you invincible, but also... He breaks all the ores around him, and his burst too if you want to be cheeky. Basic things about his kit out of the way, let's finally talk about his very first build, the support build. And of course, as always, I always do a lot of math for these videos. This one, the support build doesn't really require as much math as for example, uh, some of the other builds like DPS builds. If we look at this chart, we can see that if you have an HP percent focus build, which, you know, I've set the bar pretty low at only 49,850 hit points at level 90 with, for example, Black Tassel, as well as HP percent timepiece, HP percent goblet, and HP percent circlet. And speaking of which, I will actually switch 
um, my circlet over to an HP% percent one. And if we switch over to the Black Tassel, he now has 51,789. So in other words, you have this very cheap way to build him for a ton of hit points, but my chart specifically is based on a 49,850 hit point Zhongli. And we can see here that at a level nine shield, he provides 24,000 damage worth of absorption. This is huge, especially with the four piece tenacity of the Millilith, which this chart assumes. What's important about this chart is that we can see that going from level 80 to 90 is a nice beefy 9.46% boost to his shield, which overall I do highly recommend bringing Zhongli up to level 90. Now the next thing to talk about is what about leveling up his element of skill? We can see that going from level 8 to 9 is roughly a 6.65% increase to his element of skill, which I do recommend bringing his shield up to a minimum of level 8, but I do highly recommend bringing it up to level 9. And finally, you can crown it as well, which will give it another 6%. Now at that point, you know, that amount of resources for just a 6% gain in his shield isn't as worth it as compared to from level 8 to 9. However, it is still very, very good to consider. And the next thing to talk about is the artifacts that you can use for him. When it comes to support Zhongli, you should consider just a few artifacts that you, you can consider. The four-piece tenacity of Millilith, he is a great wielder of it, and it also increases his hit points to allow for a beefier shield. And finally, we also have the Archaic Petra. Now, unfortunately, the Archaic Petra is very clunky to use, but when you do manage to grab that Crystallized Shard, it is the largest potential damage gain out of the support sets that Zhongli can utilize. Now, it's also important to note that Zhongli himself doesn't have to use the Archaic Petra. For example, you can put this on Bennett, and then Zhongli can proc a crystallize and Bennett can pick up the crystal. However, you know, crystal RNG and everything, big headache to deal with. Not a set I necessarily recommend, but it is a set if you want to push for some maximum damage output with Zhongli in your party. Now let's talk about his weapons. In my opinion, the Favonius Lance is his best in slot for a support build because that way he can still provide even more support to your party by providing all those particles. But a great question to have is, how much durability does Zhongli sacrifice with the Favonius Lance? And we can see here that his hit points is at 44,000, but let's actually replace this piece with a crit rate, crit rate piece. That way we have a much higher chance to proc the Favonius Lance. We can see here that even with this setup, my Zhongli has 40,000 hit points. However, this math that I did for this only he has 36,000 hit points and we can see that he still has a very very durable 18,611 hit point shield at talent level 9. So this is a really good compromise for shield durability for a lot more additional utility with the Favonius Lance. And the stats to focus on are pretty simple. You want HP, right, for a more beefy shield. You want crit rate. This way you have a much higher chance of activating the Favonius Lance's passive. And finally, everything else is just a nice bonus. And just for reference, this is my go-to Zongli build nowadays. It is what I tend to use because as main DPS characters damage, you know, as their damage does more and more, Zongli's damage becomes less and less important. <laughs> So let's quickly talk about some of the teams that Zhongli support is amazing for. And obviously you have the all Geo Boys team. This is an incredibly powerful team where you can, you know, you can use Ito as the main DPS or you can use Noel as the main DPS. Now, what other more meta teams does a support Zhongli really enable? And one of them is a Hu Tao vape team. So you have Hu Tao, Xing Chou, Core, plus double Geo. Like for example, Albedo is generally the best in slot along with Zhongli. This way you have Zhongli's very beefy shield, you activate Geo Resonance, which is very powerful. And finally, you have Albedo as another sub DPS with Xing Chou. Now, of course, Zhongli can be used in so many different cores. He can be used with Melt Ganyu. Like this, he, right here, he and it really enables Ganyu to not worry about taking damage and he can just support this team. Now, there are so many teams like Xiao, for example, and if you have a second animal character like Sucrose, there she is, you can use this. You can do a Eula team. Really, the combinations are endless and Zhongli is an incredible flex slot as a fourth support character. Really, the combinations are endless. There's no way I can go through all of them. 
Okay, so we've covered his support build, the four piece tenacity of the Millith build. Let's next move on to a sub DPS geo damage build. And I'm gonna switch his artifacts over. Okay, so I've set my Jolie up for a sub DPS meteoric burst build with the catch. Let's just see how much damage he does. See here, it's doing a very formidable 80,000 damage now. Mites only has a crowned level 13 burst for reference. We can also see that the rest of his damage sources aren't looking great. But if you want that nice kind of sub DPS burst, additional burst damage, let's uh, get some raw meat real quick. There we go. Then this is a good starting build to consider. So here I have this chart where we assume an attack percent timepiece and geo damage goblet. We can see here that the two-piece Archaic and two-piece Noblesse Oblige is very competitive to, for example, the four-piece Emblem of Severed Fates, but of course the four-piece Emblem of Severed Fates ends up adding 20% energy recharge, which also helps a ton. So overall, there really isn't a close second place when it comes to utilizing Zhongli's Burst. The four-piece Emblem of Severed Fate is highly, highly recommended. However, it's worth noting that his pillar damage is significantly lower with the Emblem of Severed Fates. And if you do want to maximize pillar damage, which I'm not really going to be talking about in detail for this video, you would go something like two-piece Archaic Petra plus two-piece Tenacity of the Millith or two-piece Gladiators, something like that. But like I said, this video is not going to be about maximizing pillar damage, but this section is more going to be about maximizing his burst damage. So continuing on, let's next take a look at the difference between an HP percent focus Emblem of Sever Fate build versus an attack percent focus Emblem of Sever Fate build. Now keep in mind this is with talent level 9 and not 13 like I have. We can see here in, according to this chart that the HP percent timepiece is only doing a couple percentage points less than an attack percent timepiece thanks to this passive here adding 33% of max HP's damage as flat damage onto his meteor damage. So this means that really, in my opinion, it's not worth running the attack percent timepiece for a much squishier shield. Now it is worth noting that of course, if you're trying to get the largest meteor possible for damage per thumbnail purposes, then yes, the attack percent timepiece is going to do that for you. However, for general use, this is what I recommend. I recommend when it comes to the artifact stats, you really want to focus on a crit rate to crit damage ratio. You want an HP or attack percent timepiece, but I'd lean more towards an HP percent timepiece, as well as a crit circlet, and finally a geo damage goblet. Now the next thing to know about this build are the weapon options. And if you look at this weapon chart, there's no question about it. The single best weapon by far is a Refinement 5 Staff of Homa with less than 50% HP. And you guys know my charts. I usually use their best in slot 5 star weapon at Refinement 1 as the baseline for these charts. So the Staff of Homa with more than 50% HP at Refinement 1 is the baseline for this chart. Really interesting to note is that, yes, of course, the Staff of Homa is the best, right? But what about other weapons? We have the Catch, which at Refinement 5 still does a respectable 87% in terms of the average damage that it outputs. So so this means that the catch is an incredibly good free to play weapon as well as offering the great quality of life energy recharge which both boosts your damage thanks to the emblem as well as provides much better burst uptime. And here we can see that the catch is basically doing the same amount of damage as the engulfing lightning at refinement one. But of course with refinements the engulfing lightning will pull ahead. Next we have some other weapons down here and really I don't want to talk too much about them because you know we're going to take up too much time by doing that. But the primordial jade wing spear isn't really that practical on Zhongli honestly because you often open up with this meteor and at best you will put up his shield and have one stack on the primordial jade wing spear with that being said though it still has great base stats and if you do choose to build stacks on him when you have the opportunity you can consider using it now the next weapon is the skyward spine decent well-rounded and I really got to make a better habit of actually selecting the weapon that I'm talking about. So yeah, here's the Formidable Jade Wing Spear. Anyway, the next weapon to talk about really quick is the Skyward Spine, just balanced thing with energy recharge. It's not a bad option, especially if you need to put the catch on another character like Xiang Ling or Raiden, for example, you can slap the Skyward Spine on Zhongli with the Emblem of Sever Fates, and he will do just fine with doing a bit of extra damage on his meteors. Now, the next thing is an often overlooked weapon is the Lithic Spear. Now, of course, you have very restricted team building options with this. However, you can, for example, run Hu Tao, Xing Chou, and Zhongli, and there you have three Liyue characters already, and then your fourth character out on an albedo or something, or even Ningguang, for example, for four characters from Liyue. 
Other weapons like the Favonius Lance and the Black Tassel I don't necessarily recommend on this build which focuses on meteor damage and you know it's just not going to really bring you all that far. Um, yeah you may as well just run a support build to support your team better when it comes to running a Black Tassel or the Favonius Lance. That's my opinion of course but you get to do whatever you want. So I will give a quick demo of when I like to use this sub DPS Zhongli build in an actual optimal scenario. Now this team isn't optimal, but using Zhongli in this mission is. Now you guys will, you guys let me know if a Constellation Zero Zhongli's hitbox is big enough for this. But let me just show you what I often use Zhongli's Meteor for. Its unique properties actually make it one of the best choices in the game for this purpose and is to wipe out that entire first wave, just like that. All right, so now, uh, of course, the rest of your team can do their job to wipe out the second and third wave. All right, the next build we have is a main DPS Zhongli. And why don't we actually give this main DPS Zhongli a quick demo before we actually talk about him in detail? But here I have a Crescent Pike Zhongli and Chi Chi has literally whatever. I actually don't think she has anything equipped. And here we have Yun Jin to help boost his normal attacks. And we can see the damage is modest, but it's still, you know, not that bad. And we can see throughout this fight, at least the overworld Primo Geovishab wasn't able to break through Zhongli's shield. Now, definitely not the fastest kill, and that is actually the perfect time to talk about should you build this Zhongli? Now, in my opinion, this Zhongli I would consider to be as a mid-tier DPS character. If you do need a bridge DPS character for a second team or even your main team, Crescent Pike Zhongli is perfectly worth considering, and the, the we have the added benefit of farming for the Pale Flame set. So, because this dungeon happens to have both the Tenacity of the Millilith and the Pale Flame, both of which are actually good on Zhongli, and you know, you're gonna want some Tenacity of the Millilith pieces for your Zhongli. So, you know, this is actually great progression, especially if you get some decent Pale Flame sets and you need a main DPS character while farming for Tenacity Mill for Zhongli all at the same time, you are killing two birds with one stone. Now, with that being said, let's actually dive into some numbers and we'll start off with the artifacts. It's clear that his best in slot option is the four piece Pale Flame. Zhongli's pillars have no problem keeping up the passive. And on top of that, it just does the most damage and it also boosts all parts of the Crescent Pike's ability. And if we compare this to, for example, other four piece sets like the four piece Shimanawas, we can see that this boosts it by over 7% more than the four piece Shimanawas because the four piece Shimanawas, which let me pull up, doesn't actually boost the procs from the Crescent Pike because the procs aren't considered normal charged or plunge attack damage. The second best combination is definitely, in my opinion, the two piece Bloodstained Chivalry along with the two-piece Pale Flame. This combination is unconditional. You don't even need to worry about pillar placement or anything like that. And this just provides 50% physical damage to his entire, you know, uh, Crescent Pike damage as well as his, his own basic attack damage. And I do recommend bringing his normal attack up to level eight or so for this build if you do plan to use it. And otherwise you don't have to level up his normal attack at all. So next let's talk about weapons real quick. Here we can see in this chart that even with a refinement five staff of homa his normal attacks are basically doing the same amount of damage as with the crescent pike so really this is a no-brainer if you can get a refinement five crescent pike this is an incredible option for main dps song lee so this is just a perfectly usable bridge build like i mentioned not really top meta but a bridge build for him but let, let's actually talk about his teammates a bit you want a cryo you want an electro teammate and in my opinion official does a great job because she provides a very very steady source of elemental particles which Zhongli's pillars um, I did forget to mention earlier his pillars only have a 50% chance of generating a particle every two seconds so assuming you get a little unlucky with the RNG you will actually have some downtime on the Crescent Pike's passive because it only lasts for five seconds so as such Fischl's constant particles every one second is very helpful and Fischl happens to do a decent amount of sub DPS herself and it, also you can run Tenacity of the Millith on Fischl or you can run Tenacity of the Millith on Chi Chi or your cryo character as well 
For damage purposes though, Rosaria is the better option, in particular Noblesse Oblige Rosaria. She gets a lot of particles, she does some decent damage herself, provides 50, up to 15% crit rate. So yes, a great option for Crescent Pike to only. And finally at Constellation 6, negative 20% physical resistance is always welcomed. And last but certainly not the least, we have the 4th team slot. 4th team slot can be very flexible. You can use Albedo to sub DPS. You can use Yunjin to further boost all these normal attacks. You can use Traveler even for Geo Residence and 10% crit rate. Or you can just use a heck anyone, right? You can even use Mona to amplify more damage. But really, the 4th slot after the Cryo and Electro is very flexible. <laughs> Let's not forget about Zonli's constellations. I will go through them really quick. All of his constellations are good, but far from, you know, necessary. So constellation one, you know, doesn't really do that much, but you can use it to place two pillars to resonate with more geo structures, which can be a lot of fun. I believe, now someone please correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe each pillar has independent particle generation. The amount of screen time and the amount of time that it takes is generally not worth it. You can see here, I place one, I have to wait another four seconds, then use this hold E to place the second pillar. Most of the time, this is not really worth it. And it's worth noting that the resonances do not resonate off of each other. For example, when the left one pulses, it does not force the one on the right to pulse. So yeah, um, you don't actually get quadruple the number of pulses, you just get double the number of pulses. Next constellation, constellation two, his elemental burst. This is very useful for speed running, right? When you do use Zhongli and his burst, you don't have to use both hold E and his shield, but for casual play, you just use hold E and then use his burst. And just like that, you know, you've spent an extra one or two seconds before most abyss clears and whatever, it really doesn't matter. Constellation three increases his elemental skill by three levels, and this leads to roughly a 19% gain and his shield durability if we look at this previous chart that I did in the past. Next we have Constellation 4. This is in my opinion overall his most impactful constellation. Increases the AoE by 20% and like I said let me know if you guys go try that domain and try that strategy. Let me know if it hits the monsters on the sides. And Constellation 5 adds 3 levels to his Meteor. Now do keep in mind that because Song Li scales off of his HP as well the Meteor does not quite add as much um, damage as you would expect those three levels add much less damage in comparison but at least we have his constellation six which allows you to more easily run teams without healers oftentimes this is definitely not enough for example when dealing with corrosion this constellation six is not going to be enough to heal you through all that stuff but it's just kind of a nice small quality of life thing and generally speaking i still prefer running a healer even though i have constellation six all right, we are done for real this time. I talked about everything I want to talk about. This video ended up being very long. And just let me know if I missed anything about Zhongli. Let me know if you guys have anything to add when it comes to this character. My opinion, one of the best characters in the game, one of the highest value characters that you can have, and one of the best husbandos as well. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.